Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Is there an answer to finally getting all of us some car insurance relief? Nobody else pays the rates we do. She's right, and Detroit's mayor is working on a fix. Terrified customers look on as a rowdy group causes chaos inside a busy Greek town restaurant. Also tonight, a surprise pregnancy and an adoption battle. How can anybody do that? A teenage mother's emotional fight. But we begin with breaking news from Sterling Heights where a car has crashed into a business. We've just learned it was a two car crash and speed is believed to be a factor. One of the cars crashed into a meat market that was closed, but there were employees inside at the time. Tim Pamplin on the scene with the night cam. Tim. Quite an amazing sight here on Ryan Road, just south of 16 Mile. The Ishtar Meat Market, well, a driver got involved in a collision, went off road and crashed right in to the butchers here. Now, I just got some video from one of the workers. They didn't want to go on camera. Take a look at this. That was seconds after the car plowed into the building, smoke billowing out of there. Now, there's the second car. That car was involved, was a collision with the Envoy. The Envoy, one witness tells me, was traveling very fast, simply couldn't stop and went careening into the building. Back out here now, I'm being told uh, there were three workers. The store was closed, but there were three workers working in the back. None of them were injured. The driver of this vehicle has been taken to the hospital to be checked out. The owner of the strip mall tells me this store was just refurbished three months ago. That is the scene right now in Sterling Heights with the night camp, Tim Pamplin, local four. Okay, Tim, witnesses say they came looking for trouble. A group of men get rowdy inside the Five Guys Burgers and Fries restaurant in Greektown. It was full of customers at the time. Priya Mann is live with the video, and Priya, customers, they were attacking employees? Yeah, that's right. Witnesses say this group of men, they were throwing drinks, yelling obscenities. At one point, even tried picking up the cash register, and they say they were embarrassed to see this type of display at a family restaurant. The guy in the blue hat picked up a bag of potatoes and threw it. That was the first thing. A Sunday evening in Greektown after the Lions game turned violent at Five Guys. Everything escalated so quickly. It was very chaotic, very hectic. It went from a 2 to a 12 in like 30 seconds. The witness says the young men were drunk and looking for a fight. They bumped into four females on accident. And when the females said something, they were like, F all you bees, cuss at them. Workers tried in vain to tell the group to leave. I was wondering, did someone have a gun? I was wondering, you know, how disrespectful they were going to get because there was obviously no boundaries. It didn't matter if you were a woman, a man, older, younger, it didn't matter. The incident happened around 930 Sunday evening when downtown was still packed with families. When Detroit police arrived, the men tried sneaking out, but within minutes, both were in handcuffs. The workers were outside crying. Uh, one was one lady was pregnant and she was scared because she said she doesn't know how she's going to pay her bills. The witness says she was embarrassed to see this display at a time when the city is trying to change its image. People are feeling safe and for them to go down there and make such a ruckus and embarrass, you know, the city is just terrible because we're going forward, not backwards. And we're told there's additional security on Fridays and Saturdays, but not on Sundays. We did reach out to management at Five Guys, but did not hear back. Detroit police investigating those two men, not yet been charged. Reporting live from Greektown, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. All right, Priya. All eyes will be on Lansing tomorrow. Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan will announce plans to reduce auto insurance rates. As you know, Michigan drivers pay the highest insurance rates in the country, and many agree the state's no-fault policy needs some kind of an overhaul, but there has been little agreement on how to do that. Let's get to Mara McDonald live with what the mayor's plan looks like. Mara. Good evening to you, Devin. And you know, Mayor Duggan has been working with Republicans in Lansing. All will be revealed tomorrow. There have been several drafts of this plan, but here are some of the key points that sources tell us we can expect to see. Number one, a 30% rollback in insurance rates. Two, they're looking at capping what health care providers can charge for treating catastrophic injuries. And third, well, lower priced policies that would have a lower personal injury benefit as well. 
The eve of Duggan's big reveal with House Speaker Tom Leonard, two Metro Detroit Democrats had town hall meetings where they got an earful from people who think they're getting gouged. I've got a 2006 Toyota, and when I first got it, it was $479, and now I pay $2,200 for the same car. My insurance uh, is $846 a month alone. Everybody is sick and tired of paying high car insurance rates, but Detroiters are drowning and have been getting soaked for years. Mayor Mike Duggan has been pushing for no-fault reform for months. Tomorrow, he unveils his plans, but we've been here before attempting to reform no-fault, and it has gone precisely nowhere. The key thing is, are the rates really going to come down? We can make changes, but will the rates really come down and will they stay down? Henry Yanez was one of those hosting a town hall on the issue tonight. And what the biggest sticking point has been is capping those personal injury benefits. As it stands right now, Michigan is the only state that doesn't. Duggan's soon to be revealed plan is just one option. There are other bipartisan groups throwing out their own plans. I'm sure Republican women don't like paying more uh, because they're a woman either. I'm sure Republican uh, uh, members don't want to pay more if they don't have a college degree, they don't have a doctorate. That's not fair. We need to have a fair and accountable system of insurance. Back here live, the biggest question tonight, exactly what kind of cap is Duggan's plan going to suggest for those personal injury policies? We're live downtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara. For the second straight day, Detroit Public Schools will send students home early because of record temperatures. Students will have yeah. half day tomorrow. So let's get to Ben Bailey tracking tomorrow's forecast, but one more day near 90, right, Ben? One more. If we can get through it, the relief is on its way. It's hard to believe when you look back at today, you see a map like this. This is the high temperatures from today. This was not a record. 90 degrees in Metro Airport, 91 in Ann Arbor and Howell. Even Flint was one of the warm spots in 92. Today's record was 93. Tomorrow's will be 91, and so there is a chance that we could at least tie or maybe even beat that record in the afternoon. Starting out humid in the 60s, we'll be into the 80s by noon, and wait till you see the relief that's coming later in that seven-day forecast, guys. Okay. The dive team has recovered the body of a man who fell off a boat and into the Detroit River in downtown. Uh, this was the scene at Millican Marina. The man was underwater for nearly an hour before he was found. His name has not yet been released to us. The final two teams in week three of the NFL season began tonight's game with a show of unity. Jerry Jones joined the Dallas Cowboys in kneeling before the national anthem. Players then stood locking arms together during the Star Spangled Banner. The Arizona Cardinals stood at their goal line with their arms locked. Players around the league protested after President Trump said players who kneel during the anthem should be fired. The controversial move started two seasons ago as a way to protest police violence and racial inequality. New tonight, Kwame Kilpatrick loses the latest battle to lower his restitution, why a judge has rejected his request. Three local children find themselves trapped in a gun safe. You'll see how firefighters got them out. But first, a teenager's surprise pregnancy turns into an adoption battle. How can you just strip a mother of her baby? And what happened when this mom decided she wants to keep her child? A Defender Special Report is next. A woman told me, she was like, you're going into labor. She didn't even know she was pregnant. I was like, no, I'm not. There's no way. This teenager's surprise pregnancy led to an adoption battle. And tonight, the defenders take you inside an intense custody battle for baby Maverick, born in the middle of the night to a scared teenager. Within hours, paperwork is signed, the mother's rights relinquished, and an adoption agency ready to find new parents. Days after, the young mother changes her mind and wants her baby back, but is it too late? Defender Kevin Dietz has the adoption fight from Muskegon. It was not an ideal welcome to the world for baby Maverick delivered early at 29 weeks by a mother who had no idea she was pregnant. Premature and weighing just two pounds, delivered by doctors who rushed Maverick to an incubator in the intensive care unit. Maverick's mom did not even get to hold her baby. I was at the beach yesterday in a bikini, like I'm not pregnant, I'm telling you guys, I'm not pregnant. Alex Robinson is a 17-year-old high school senior from Illinois. As a last blast of summer fun, her and her friends headed to West Michigan for a day at the beach. This is Alex hours before the birth. In a matter of minutes, she went from the beach 
to the back of an ambulance. I was just like, oh my God. And they were like, what? And I looked down and there was just a huge puddle of blood. She found out the pain and bleeding was because she was about to deliver a baby. They did an ultrasound and a woman told me, she was like, you're going into labor. Baby Maverick was here and Alex was in a panic. I can't tell my friends, like I can't tell my mom, like I can't go home with a baby. She didn't want anyone to know. She wanted to go back in time. I didn't care about anything more than what homecoming dress I was gonna get and what prom dress I was gonna get. A counselor at the hospital told her if she gave the baby up for adoption, no one would have to know. They were like, well, you, ha you have options. She's a 17-year-old girl, they exploited her. You know, they took advantage of her because they wanted her baby. Just a few hours after delivering a baby, a representative of Bethany Christian Adoption Services was on site with papers to fill out. I just wanted somebody to help me like I didn't know what to think. She's a kid. She was in shock. She didn't even know she was pregnant. It wasn't only adoption forms. She was also given this safe surrender form to sign, which revokes all her rights to baby Maverick after a 28-day waiting period. There was no reason why they would have thought that I was mentally okay to make that decision. 12 hours after Maverick was born, his 17-year-old mom was sent out the door with a cab voucher. This needs to stop because they just sent her out the back door, down the stairs, cab, gone. She could have hemorrhaged, she could have died. This needs to stop. When Alex got back to Illinois, her mom found out about baby Maverick. She was like, if you want your baby, like you can have your baby. Like, I'm not gonna judge you for it. She wasn't mad, she was supportive. Seeing that, Alex changed her mind. She wanted Maverick. They called the adoption agency, making it clear they wanted to keep Maverick. When they showed up at the hospital where Maverick was still in the NICU, they were turned away, saying Alex signed away her rights. She's, Mom, she should be doing skin-to-skin -skin contact, the babies. You know, Mom sent sound. They scrambled for a lawyer. The first one failed to properly fill out the paperwork. They found themselves in court. Bethany wanted to go forward with the adoption. The father filed paperwork saying he wanted custody. I'm all for um, adopting kids and giving them new homes, but not in a way like this, not at all. The judge ordered a two week delay. The hearing was to be held August 31st, but that would be 29 days after Maverick's birth. One more than the 28 day safe surrender rule, allowing the birth mother to change her mind. The hearing was moved up. The judge ruling in favor of the birth mother and father. Broke down bawling because I was just so excited. And Couldn't have done it without you. you. <laughs> Up until he said, like, I had custody of my son, I was like, just super scared and on the edge of my seat the entire time. The representative of Bethany Community Services in Muskegon would not comment on camera. The corporate office in Grand Rapids did not return calls. Neither did representatives of Muskegon's Hackley Hospital, where Maverick was born. The family feels fortunate they now finally can see and hold baby Maverick. But they worry the system is stacked against vulnerable moms. They hope sharing Maverick's story educates others and encourages lawmakers to do more for the rights of birth mothers. We will continue to follow baby Maverick's progress and keep you posted. We've also put a lot of information about adoption and safe surrender on our Defenders page at our website, clickondetroit.com. Kevin Dietz, Defenders. You know, at the heart of this is one of those amazing stories. It's still so hard for so many people to believe someone not knowing they're knowing, pregnant but until it happens a lot. A lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a look at what uh, I'm working on for tomorrow night. Kim Adams understands that she has lived a dramatic life in the public eye. Detroiters who've long loved her on television saw Hurricane Katrina through her eyes when she and her family lost just about everything. And then just about the time it was all starting to fade. So I was making breakfast for the kids and I bent over to pick something up and I touched my shirt to hold my shirt and I felt a lump almost under my armpit. Her inclination was to just stay quiet about her fight against breast cancer, but she came to realize her experience of so many doctors missing what she seemed to know was something others need to hear. Tomorrow night at 11, she also wants you to know she is blessed. <laughs> Great to catch up with Kim. We will do that tomorrow yeah, night. Look forward to hearing that. Yeah. 
Uh, so it's really weird in my yard. There are leaves that have fallen onto the lawn, and I have my sprinklers on today. Which, that's, it was <laughs> what is going on there? Site. Yes, yes. Yeah. Nicely bizarre. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this was would have been nice, I think, for about two days, maybe three, but now we're on to five and tomorrow <laughs> six. Yeah. Uh, probably enough, uh, and Mother Nature is finally going to give us some relief once we get into Wednesday. But we've got one more scorcher to get through. Even tonight, even with the nighttime temperatures, you can tell where the difference is between the 70s, the humid 70s over the top of us. And here's that front. Look at some of these numbers, 40s and 50s. And would you believe it? We're going to be seeing lows even cooler than this as we get towards the end of the seven day forecast. It is going to be a drastic switch. In addition to the heat, of course, we're dealing with humidity and those dew points in the upper 60s. This is not comfortable sleeping weather, even as temperatures going to fall into the 60s tonight. A little bit uh, better to tell exactly where that front is, where the dew point gradient is, keeping the humidity here to the south and east and the drier air that's coming with the cooler temperatures as well. So as that jet stream starts to migrate over us, it is going to lift a little bit, so we're not going to see as cool as conditions as what they've seen out to the west, but considering where we've been, this is going to be a huge change as we finish out the week and as we finish out tonight. Pretty nice sunset on storm pins. This is from Clinton Township. You can see some of those pink clouds out there with the blue skies. A lot of humidity out there too uh, tonight, and there is shower activity along that front right now. There's quite a bit of it, as a matter of fact, across parts of Iowa and Minnesota. We're not going to get any of it or barely any as we get through the next 36 hours and we need it. We've only picked up nine tenths of an inch of rain this entire month. Compare that to last year when we had over six inches of rain. This was the fourth wettest September we've ever had last year. But even with nine tenths, we're not even in the top 10 driest, believe it or not. Hazy, hot and humid conditions continue for tomorrow. Cold front will finally arrive once we get into Wednesday and it's coming early. But because that front is going to move through in the morning, that's going to limit our potential for rain. In fact, if we see a shower on Wednesday, it's going to be on the east side and it's really not going to amount to much. 67 tonight, mild conditions, but still humid. And those high temperatures are going to look very similar to what we saw today. These are probably a little bit on the conservative side. 89 in the city, 90 in West Bloomfield, 90 in Livonia. Usually as we get closer to that front and see a little bit more of a breeze, uh, these numbers will probably increase compared to what we saw yesterday. 90s inland, upper 80s towards the lake. Every Everybody's in the 90s in the West Zone and the North Zone. Well, you're not going to be cool tomorrow. You'd be just like everybody else, upper 80s to near 90. And then look at this change. Highs in the 60s, morning lows over the weekend, 47 on Saturday and Sunday. Most of that forecast is filled with sunshine, but we've got a couple chances of rain. Let's yeah. hope we get everything we can. One of those 25 degree swings that <laughs> comes with a change to the seasons, That's right? Hard, yeah. yeah, very bad. Firefighters had to move fast because of the heat. Three young kids get trapped inside a gun safe in Macomb County. But first, how a helicopter ended up on the roof of this home. That's next. Detroit police are still trying to figure out who killed the owner of a flower shop and why. 31-year-old Deontay Box was shot outside his home on Ohio Street on the city's west side. He was the owner of something unique floral shop in Southfield. Kwame Kilpatrick's request to have the rest of his restitution thrown out has been rejected. The former Detroit mayor asked a judge to shed his one and a half million dollar bill. Judge Nancy Edmonds refused his request, citing Kilpatrick used old arguments to make his claim. The search is on for this heartless crook. She stole a charity jar full of money from the counter on the 7-Eleven on Romeo Plank in Macomb Township. If you recognize her or saw anything, you're asked to call police. A pilot is in stable condition after his helicopter crash on top of a home. The accident happened this afternoon outside Tampa, Florida. Investigators say this was a home built helicopter made from a kit. The cause of the crash remains under investigation. Nobody was inside the house when the helicopter went down. The latest effort to replace the Affordable Care Act is on life support itself tonight. Republican Senator Susan Collins of Maine announced today she will not support the Graham Cassidy bill, making her the third Republican in opposition. So unless someone changes their mind, Republicans will fall short of the 50 votes they need. Uh, that, of course, would set it up for a tie-breaking vote by the vice president. GOP leaders have until Saturday to pass Graham Cassidy with a simple majority.
Firefighters in Sterling Heights came to the rescue to three children who accidentally locked themselves inside a gun safe. Take a look. This is the picture of the safe after firefighters used the jaws of life to cut it open. The family says the safe was new and the instructions and combination were locked inside Ooh. the safe with the kids. Other than being a little overheated, though, the kids were not hurt. But I imagine that had to be a really a, scary. A little spooky. Yeah, yeah. situation. Yeah.